Welcome to the End Time Truth Television, the channel for the lovers of truth, for the truth of the end time. So if you are a lover of truth, give us a subscription and God bless you. Shalom. Hello everybody, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, God bless you. I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our Lord who died on the cross for us so that he might save us from all forms of darkness and deception of demonic and demonized traditions. Now, look at how I put it, demonic and demonized traditions. Now, I know that some persons would also want to ask me, uh, why do I use tradition or demonic tradition? Yeah, the reason is that there are some traditions that are demonic and there are some traditions that, you know, are a kind of a culture of the people. Now, but any tradition or culture of the people that begins to clash with God's will is no longer part of us as Christians. You see, Jesus, the Lord, even rebuked people when they, they, they disregarded the commandment of God, all thanks to their tradition of men. In Mark chapter 7, verse 8, the Bible says, You have let go of the commands of God and are holding on to human traditions. I want to read it from KJV. King James Version said, For laying aside the commandment of God, you hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and what have you. Now, this, uh, this becomes a problem laying aside the commandments of God for the reason of the tradition of men. Neglecting the commandments of God, you hold to the tradition of men. So there are some traditions that are tradition of men and most likely they are demonic. There are things that men brought in and imposed on us. Now, we're going to look at... Um, a certain reverend, an Anglican reverend, who brought um, the Reformed Ogoni Fraternity into Nigeria and also some parts of Africa. I know some people from the, the Yoruba-speaking tribe will have issues with this because Ogoni is what it is. It is a cult. It is a very deadly and dangerous cult. And when you heard me say a reverend brought it in, now, these things, the reverend is no longer alive, but the seed he planted is still very much alive. Now, there was something that was operational at that time that was called Ogoni. Now, this Ogoni, um, let, 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 me just, let me just look at it and tell you a bit of their functions. Now, the traditional Ogoni society was part of the checks and balances system of the Yoruba kingdoms. They were kingmakers and disposed of both a religious as well as a judicial function. They had also the power to dethrone the Oba, that is the king, and could order him to kill himself or would give him poison. They could order the Oba to kill himself. Now, what do they worship? Now, they worshipped the goddess of Earth as she gave them the real power of unity. Oguni used to be the highest court in Yoruba land. Now, the word here is used to be the highest court, not cult now, the highest court in Yoruba land. No person was punished without their judgment or consent. They were so powerful that had the ability to choose or remove kings. Now, do not be deceived. It is not as if these powers have been taken away from them. It has been reformed. It has been reformed in the sense that majority of their members are in the high cadre of power in the, in the society today. Majority of the you know, successful lawyers, the chief judges, you know, the judges, the justices you have, and the politicians, you know, even to the, 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 the high level of the presidency and all you know, the governors and all, you know, uh, however you can call it, majority of them are products and members of this dreaded court. Now the issue is that in the constitution of this country, it is a taboo, it is it is against the constitution for anybody seeking uh, office, uh, um, you know, to occupy a public office to be a member of a court. Yet, majority of these persons are a court. Now, but this is not what I am bringing here. It is not a hidden thing. 
even if they hear me, they know that I'm saying the truth. There are so many priests today, you know, who are members of the Ogoni fraternity, you know, and this, you know, when people talk about the, the, the traditional churches, the Orthodox, the, the Methodist, um, uh, you know, the, the Anglican, the Roman Catholic, and the Baptist church, they say that that is the church where, you know, there is safety, spiritual safety. I laugh because it is not true. It is no longer so. Now, so we had in the, you know, these churches were healthy before because something used to happen in those days that uh, when the church discovered that a member was fraternizing with this cult, Oguni, now they, they used to be excommunicated until a certain reverend sauntered into the space and we wrote everything. I'm going to tell you briefly about the life of the Angli Anglican Reverend who founded the Guni Fraternity. He also represented the Lagos Colony. In his early life, his father was Chief Ashokbo of Ebutero, Lagos, who sent him to the CMS Grammar School, Lagos. Having spent a year in the school, his father um, you know, had a plan for him to go into the mission work. Now, as he had trained his other brothers in trade, his father wanted this Jacob to go into mission work as a missionary, maybe as a reverend and what have you. His other brothers have been trained into other kinds of trades. Uh, you know, it used to be a pride. And even today, it is still a pride. When you come into a family, you have a family that goes to be, you know, to have a reverend father, to have a reverend sister, it used to be a thing of pride. So in those days, you know, families having vicars, so reverends, used to be a thing of joy. And it used to be very wonderful, even also to see a person who is referred to as a pastor. Not today that, you know, the devil has used some of his men to destroy and desecrate that, you know, office of the clergy. So Jacob took strong objection to, you know, this because he wanted to either be a carpenter or a tailor. He didn't want to be a reverend. He didn't want to have anything to do with religion, but he eventually opted to train as a printer. He opted to train as a printer, which his father also liked. You know, his father believed that that would make him, you know, to read well, it will improve his ability of reading. And so leading to a clerical occupation. The father was still not seeing the ambition of the son becoming a cleric sometime, someday. So when the boy decided to venture into the trade of printing press. The father was okay with it because it would uh, be an advantage to him. So um, he became an apprentice to R.B. Blaze. From there, he was receptive to mission work and was admitted to the CMS training institution. In the process of learning his work, he opened his heart into you know, the mission work. And so he was now admitted into the CMS training institution. Now, after his training, he was sent to Fora Bay College, Sierra Leone, to reach theology. On his return to Nigeria, he became active in the church and in the social environment. In 1917, he founded the Reformed Ogoni Fraternity, ROF, a major intended to marry the traditional. Now, watch the word. This was intended to marry the traditional Ogoni with the Orthodox Christian establishment, which had excommunicated members who belonged to the Ogoni. Now, I started telling you that the church space used to be very healthy. Those old, old churches, you know, those, those are weird, the churches that we had before, you know, the Pentecostal um, revolution came into place. So they were so, so, so careful that any member that was said to belong to the fraternity, the Ogoni fraternity was excommunicated. Now, this new breed of Christian came back with an ideology and the idea of marrying these cult activities together with Christianity. And that is the epitome of religion you, you have today. And that's why I am quick to tell people that I don't do religion anymore. I want to do Christianity. Even though that some persons say they don't, they are not Christians. Me, I am a Christian. Some preachers also preach it that they are not Christians. Me, I am a Christian.
it will surprise you if you take a, a tour uh, cut across many churches, even the traditional churches, the many old churches that people talk about has been the safest heaven for um, the place that gives you immunity from some form of courtism. Then you'll be surprised to find out the majority of the elders and the leaders of such churches are actually members of one fraternity or the other, and most popularly, the Oguni fraternity. And uh, in spite of the fact that uh, the date somehow was given, the date of the formation of the ROF was given as in, in 1917, but sometimes around 2014, um, 17th of October 2014, the ROF members gathered, um, December 17, rather, 2014, they gathered and they celebrated the 100 year um, existence of the fraternity. Now, the fact is that yeah, I think I will have to do a part two of this, and you will understand that the decay in the society and more so the, you know, the religious uh, space stem from a very long time ago, not something that started today. But I'm just doing this just for to sensitize you and to make you understand that uh, it is not a campaign against church. You know me, I don't, I don't ask people not to go to church. But in your going to church, you must also fraternize with God, fraternize with the spirit of the living God. And that will aid you to know when something is wrong in a place where you are staying to have fellowship with you. Now, so Ogumbi was a religious icon of the past, who nevertheless was appointed Archdeacon of Lagos in 1921. In spite of the fact that he came in and brought this kind of reformation, this kind of strange marriage between the church and the tradition, between the church and the cult group. He came in and tried to marry this. Now, in spite of that, he was appointed as the Archdeacon of Lagos in 1921. Now, we we'll said that that was actually an accelerated promotion, 1917 to 1921, just five, five years in between this promotion took place. And in this capacity, he wielded a lot of influence, both in politics, and he was appointed into the Legislative Council of Nigeria in 1996, representing the colony division of Lagos. And so you see, because of this certain influence he had, it became very easy for him, you know, to wine and dine with the great and mighty. The Venerable Archdeacon Reverend Thomas Adeshino Jacob Sinogumbi was the founder of the ROF, the Reformed Ogoni Fraternity. He was born in Isaliko, Lagos, Nigeria. He was the only African archdeacon of the Anglican communion of his time. Now, I'm not just telling you, you know, history, and I, wa I want you to be receptive. I want you to open your heart because these ideas are still there today. You know, the reason why the Roman Catholic became what it is today was because there was a marriage of Christianity and paganism that came together. My Catholic friends will not like to hear this, but that is the truth. The reason you see all kinds of statutes and all kinds of, you know, celebration of mass or saints every day is because there was a marriage of Christ the Christian faith and the pagan faith so that if you're a Christian and you're a, a pagan, these two come together and then there will be no discrimination any longer. So the man was the most distinguished commander of the British Empire, BE, as well as the honorable member of the Leg Legislative Council. He was also the licentiate of theology. He was a spiritual church leader and an innovator who introduced things into the church, such as celebration of harvest. Of course, if he could introduce cultism into the church and it was not questioned anymore, because he he probably was very intelligent to convince those that were ahead of him that this has nothing to do with whatever you think. But if you know, you know that it has everything to do with paganism. It has everything to do with idolatry. It has everything to do with the still worship of the earth, the goddess of the earth. It has everything to do with it because if you are from here, you will understand that these people, are just like you have the free mason, you have the Illuminati, you have, you have 
you know, all kinds of lodge there in the Western world. And these things are caused, you know, and, but they will present it to you to mean that they are nothing. They are philanthropic in nature. They bless people. They help people. They donate to the orphanages. You know, they help the government. They buy ambulances for hospitals and get, you know, um, security equipment for the security agents or agencies in, in the country. So they are actually doing a lot of good work for humanity. But the truth is that all those things that they do has no way or do not in any way change what they are. So this guy was a spiritual church leader and an innovator who introduced things to the church, such as the celebration of harvest festival into the Anglican church in 1910 AD and at the Holy Trinity Church in Temeta in Lagos State. Ogumbi was the man who first put public Christian revival services in practice in 1913 AD when he founded the Lagos Case Week Convention. Through Ogumbi, Nigerian churches put their heads together to form a body at Onisha in 1943 AD known as CCN, Christian Council of Nigeria, with a company of all eminent churches of that time, such as CMS, which, is, which you know, was known as the Anglican Church then, CMS simply means Church Missionary Society. Then you have the Methodist Church, the Wesleyans, then the Salvation Army Church, the Baptist Church. He was a member of Oguni Ibile in Lagos State, a member of Oguni Aborigin in Abelkuta, and also a member of Oshugo Court in Ijeboland. Now, this is still the Reverend we're talking about here that was a member of all these courts. Ogumbi was the first Oloria Kemal of the fraternity. He died in June 1952. Now, Oloria Akwena, I think that is the highest level of ranking in the Ogoni fraternity. And it is a spiritual office that was held. And I think the next in that rank is the Uluwo. Now, these are, these are um, you know, very sensitive uh, positions held in those days. Now, remember that what they worship was the goddess of Earth. And she gave them the real power of unity according to what they say. So um, I just I just did this. Of course, you can find it on the net. It is not, I, I didn't invent it. It is there on the net. Before you come to say, I am lying, please make your research very well. And I would like to tell you that, again, for the umpteenth time, the reason I, I do this what I do, I do what I do, it's not, so many of you are so quick to say because of money. Well, thank God, I, I wish I can make as much money that is, you know, possible from this. I wish so. I wish I can make enough money from this. I wish so. But in the meantime, it is not about money, just money. And I, I do encourage anybody, if you think that making money on YouTube is that easy, you can also start a YouTube channel. Once you have a Gmail account, you have a YouTube channel. So you can start also try doing what I'm doing to make your own money, you know. But to those who are sincere, to those who are who are Christians, like I said, I'm a Christian. If you're not a Christian, it is your business. Me, I am a Christian. And nothing will make me change. Nothing will make me deny that fact that I am a Christian. I want to say to you that this has, you know, nothing to do with, uh, you know, being uh, trying to be popular, popularity is not, I don't think it is achieved this way. There is a shift way of becoming popular. So I would like to read your comments in the comment section. And if there is any other uh, information that probably I didn't put here, which is missing, you are at liberty also to put them down in the comment section. Thank you very much. And may the good Lord bless you. Please stay away from courts. Stay away from anything that is not Christ's. Stay away from making shams. Anybody that is introducing you to shams, Pastor Deboye said, you will not just die, but you will die miserably. And that was a, a very wise word from that man of God that visited a native doctor in his early years and found out also that there was no protection in the devil. Satan cannot protect you. And we've told that there is nothing devil gives you that is free. 
he will always come back for pay. There is always a payday. The devil will never give you anything free. God bless you. I will be seeing you in the next video. Till then, from me to you. Shalom.